Hi, this is Mike with 5-Minute Mobility, and on this channel we discuss ways to deploy and manage mobility in the enterprise. Today I want to talk to you about Apple's DEP, or Device Enrollment Program, which is more better known as Apple Business Manager, which you're also going to see is labeled as ABM. The easiest way for me to describe this is, what DEP is doing is it's taking a consumer-based iPhone and turning it into an enterprise-grade device. Apple's going to label any DEP-enabled device as a supervised device. A supervised device, it's essentially, it's giving you more granular access to the operating system. You access more, more features, more restrictions to utilize through your MDM. Now, before we get into what all these supervised features are, I wanna help you guys get started with DEP. So to get started, we're gonna head over to business.apple.com. Now, some of you may be familiar with deploy.apple.com, which is a more Apple's legacy portal. In June of 2018, they released Apple's business manager portal. So if you are a deploy.apple customer right now, you may already be seeing some pop-ups say, hey, why don't you upgrade to Apple business manager? Highly recommend it. We'll probably go into another video about what is the differences between deploy.apple.com and business.apple.com. But for this video, if you're, if you're a brand new customer, I highly recommend just going to business.apple.com. Once you're there, sign up for an account. It takes, honestly, a couple days to get approved. Someone at Apple is actually manually approving you into the program. But uh, once you are approved, we can start enrolling devices. Now, I need to discuss with you really quick what DEP is. It's a free program from Apple. There is no yearly or annual price tag around it, but it does require an MDM. DEP alone cannot manage devices. What DEP is doing is allowing you to supervise devices and do more automated MDM enrollment, but requires an MDM. So I just wanna get that out of the way. Free program, but we do need an MDM. So once we're, once we're signed up and we're ready to enroll devices, uh, let's head over to our MDM. For this instance, I'm using Jamf. There's a lot of MDMs out there, and honestly, most of them are gonna support DEP out of the box. So once I'm at, uh, once I'm at my Jamf MDM portal, I'm gonna get a head over to settings global management and my device enrollment program is right there. Now the logic of where your device enrollment program setup is is going to vary between MDM and MDM but once we're there um, within Janth I'm going to download the public key. Um, once we have that public key you can go back to your Apple, Apple business pa manager and create an MDM server. So I'm already there I'm going to get it, give it a name sure and then upload my file here. Once we've uploaded the token into Apple's DEP servers, uh, now we need to get the token from Apple. So go ahead and download that token. And then we're gonna go back to our MDM instance and create a new DEP server and upload your token here. So once we upload it, that's it. Your uh, Apple DEP servers and your MDM are talking and having a good time. So at this point, we can start creating an enrollment profiles uh, and really get into the, uh, the fun part of uh, accessing all these supervised features. So for this, I'm gonna head over to my VMware Workspace ONE MDM environment to show you guys all the cool supervised features that we can access. So this is my VMware Workspace ONE environment. You guys may know VMware Workspace ONE is AirWatch. Uh, that's what they used to be called, but um, we're gonna go over to devices, uh, profiles and resources. I'm gonna go ahead and create an iOS profiles. And this is where we can start having some fun. Um, so uh, when you're creating your profiles, I'm gonna dive into restrictions. So once you're into restrictions, again, this may vary, This uh, the look of this may vary from, from MDM to MDM, but as you can see over here on the, on the right hand side, you see all these supervised features. These are all the cool features that we can access as part of DP. So one of the top ones with 11.3 uh, that came out, we can delay updates on supervised devices up to 90 days. So uh, that is huge for a lot of my customers that, um, especially when iOS 12 rolled out, if we didn't have applications that were ready out of the box for it, we can delay that update for 90 days. And what that looks like on supervised devices, if they go to general and try to find that software update, it's grayed out. They can't access it at all. So really cool feature uh, to ensure that, hey, if we need more time for testing or ensuring that developers can uh, are ready for the next iOS update, we can delay those updates. You can see I'll scroll through these, but I'm gonna nail out some of the more popular ones that I see. One of my favorite features here is showing in high 
hiding apps. So a supervised device allows you to, you can't really remove, but we're gonna hide all the applications, all the native applications on the device. So with a supervised device, we can hide every single app on the device, but the settings icon. So if we really wanna customize the look and experience, we can. So um, for this, I would just start hiding all, it's, it's a little bit of a manual process, but you're gonna type in each application and hide that. Um, other things that we can do is controlling things like iCloud. So that's a bit, a, a big frustration for a lot of my customers is what do we do about iCloud? Uh, so we can, there's a lot of supervised features that we can access to control and manage iCloud on devices. Force Wi-Fi whitelisting. This is an awesome one. So if we want to control the SSID, we can. So we can provision the Wi-Fi via cert or however you want to do that. And if we want to, that device can only access that SSID. So if someone brings my iPad home and tries to get on their home network, they can. It's locked to that specific SSID. On top of that, uh, doing things like single app mode or, or also known as kiosk mode. Uh, in order to do that, you have to ha a device has to be supervised. Now there's ways around it like guided access, but this is a much better way of provisioning kiosk mode or single app mode on an iPad. And can see all the cool things that we can access and control on a single app mode or kiosk mode iPad. Disabling the touch screen, uh, disabling volume buttons, so if we don't want them messing with things, so uh, locking it to a specific application. Another cool uh, thing that supervised devices can do is actually give you control of how you want the home screen layout to look like. So if we, so on here in, in, in VMware, I can actually start typing an application and tell that application where I want it to go. So if I want it locked to the dock, I can. If I want it on the second page instead of the first page, or if I want to put the settings icon on the second page instead of the first page, you know, you have control of how you want that iOS device um, to look like. One of the other things that it can do is the lock screen message. Uh, uh, on, the lo on the bottom of that screen, you can actually put a certain message in there. So, hey, if lost, please return, or uh, this is your IT's help desk number if you have any questions, or whatever you want to label that message as, but we can put a message on the actual device. So as you guys can see, there's a lot of cool things we can do with supervised devices. So uh, I highly recommend if you're starting to deploy Apple devices or already have deployed Apple devices and are not utilizing Apple's DEP or ABM program, I highly recommend you to do so. It really gives you a lot of tools to manage iOS devices at an enterprise level. Again, this is Mike with 5-Minute Mobility. I really hope this helped you as you guys are on your way to trying to figure out how do we manage Apple devices in an, in an enterprise environment. Um, in future videos, I'll, I'll try to dive into uh, a little bit further of uh, what the DEP and ABM Council, uh, a little bit more of how do we get started and going through that. Um, and if there's anything that you guys want to see, understand a little bit more, please comment. I, I want to get relevant content out to you guys of what you guys want to understand uh, from mobility in the enterprise. So appreciate it. Thank you.